This is piece 244, The Swing After Fragonard by Yenka Shonabar. The context for Shonabar is that he calls himself, quote, a post-colonial hybrid, in quote. He came from a family where his father was a Nigerian lawyer. They lived in London until Shonabar was three and then moved to Nigeria, but he spent his summers studying in London. And at age 17, he moved back to London to attend school. And it was then that a professor asked him, why doesn't he pr produce art that is reflective of his African identity? And so this notion of what is identity has pervaded his work since then. And you can see here, this is one of several pictures taken from a 1988 19, excuse me, 98 production where he explored the notion of the life of a dandy and was the subject of the photographs. And here he is dressed as a dandy. And so he questions, you know, someone with darker skin wearing the clothes of a European dandy. How do we react to that? And what makes our identity? So we're going to see that throughout this work. So the form of the swing after Fragonard is the same in some ways as Fragonard's Rococo painting. He, we have a young girl on a swing. Her slipper is suspended in the air where she's coquettish, coquettishly playing with her lover, the Baron who is peering up through her skirts, remember, and her husband was pushing the swing. There's foliage here in this garden that Shonabar has kept. But what's changed, the woman is headless. The swing isn't as fancy, doesn't have that pink little cushion. Her skin is not white. You can see that her legs are white. They're covered by a, you know, leggings or stockings, but her torso, her arms are not white. They're more of a coffee color. And Shonabar obviously does this intentionally. Uh, she's wearing Dutch wax cloth, we call it. She's not wearing silk and satin. And the other participants are gone. The lover, the husband, and the statues are not here. So content. We, the viewer, are looking up into her skirts, just like the lover was. And so we are complicit in this voyeurism. We are a part of the sexuality of the piece. It's an immersive experience, so that's why that, that happens. And we can walk around the backside of this piece also, and we can experience you know, the husband's view as well. She is headless, so we are hopefully reminded of the fact that this class of people, this wealthy class, was the target of the guillotine in the French Revolution. And this coffee-colored skin, neither black nor white, we're left with the post-colonial feel of racial identity. Makes us, us think about colonialism and race and the European role in this. Significant part of Shonabar's art is the, the fabric that he uses. It's in, I think, nearly every piece that I've seen, other than the photographs of him in the Dandy series. At any rate, this is Dutch wax cloth, and it is, has a complicated historic history. The Dutch here from the Netherlands traveled around Africa, and they exploited Indonesia. In Indonesia, there was this batik cloth. It was like tie-dyed, heavily labor-intensive the use of wax you can see here and you know uh, using you know, by hand just creating these designs so from indonesia the dutch got this batik process from the african continent the dutch took the designs that were indigenous to africans and then the the dutch and the British also uh, took these 
African designs and Indonesian batik process and they mechanized it. And so they were producing this Dutch wax cloth you know, by the millions and then selling it in West Africa so that we look at this cloth, you know, hundreds of years later and we think, oh, this is indigenous West African cloth, when in reality it is something that has been appropriated from the Indonesian people and the design from the African people and then sold and made money off of by the Europeans in imperialism and colonialism. So the function of this piece by Shonabar is that sensuality is maintained. The identity is a construction. Who is this person in his piece? Uh, he is commenting on colonialism, appropriation of materials, and how we tell the story of history. He is also addressing the accumulation of wealth. When we see a woman swinging in a garden in pre-French industrial or French uh, revolutionary you know, history, we have to wonder, where did her wealth come from? And Shonabar wants to remind the viewer that the wealth came from colonialism and from exploiting other people around the world to get wealth that she's able to experience in her leisure pursuits. Other art created by Shonabar, this is titled Nelson's Ship in a Bottle, and it too reflects his hybrid experience in life. Uh, Nelson was a great British admiral, and this would have been a ship that he would have uh, captained. It's one thirtieth the size of the original ship. But the design at the top is flat uh, sails made from this <clears throat> Dutch wax cloth that reflects African designs. And of course, Africa was heavily colonized by the British and you, their wealth was usurped by the British. And so Shonabar is living both of these lives in the British world and in Nigerian world. Another piece that shows, again, the appropriation of African uh, culture. We have the African continent here on the table, and these men who are headless are dressed in Dutch wax cloth. And what are they discussing? And then another context that is uh, Interesting, well, it's important to understand about this artist Shonabar. At age 18, he had an um, illness that affected his, uh, inflammation of his spinal cord, and it create, caused paralysis on one side of his body and has caused him to, to use uh, assistance to help him create his art. But he creates also a sensitivity and an awareness for us, the viewer, in this piece of people who experience disabilities and um, just how also how um, productive he is in, his, in the art world. And this is some of his more recent art. And that is Shonabar and the Swing After Fragonard. <laughs> 